Amen. Come on, do trouble last. Come on. If you know without a sure of a doubt, trouble don't last always. If anybody know that without a shadow of a doubt, why don't you give God some praise? Trouble don't last always. We can make it for a night. But joy is coming in the morning.
if you've been in trouble and you came out of trouble, you need to give God some praise. We come today to celebrate. 18 years worth of trouble. 18 years worth of trouble. But he's still here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People walked away. People talked about it. Scandalized his name. The devil tried to get him to throw in the tower. He was troubled. You don't know about the sleepless nights she had. You don't know about the tears she cried. You don't know about that. But trouble gave him eight more years. Eighteen years. But we come to celebrate what God had did with the trouble man. Put everybody out the house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been right because I'm the man of God. Yeah. And I'm in charge. Mm -hmm. But sometimes your wife sees stuff you don't see. Mm -hmm. My daddy told me, boy, you come in after 11 o'clock, you stay where you at. That's right. I mean, sleep in the car, wherever you be at, that's where you stay. Mm -hmm. I came home. 11 after 5. Joker said, go where you came from. Yes. I was only five minutes late. He locked the door. <laughs> Not just the door, but the stream door. <laughs> there ain't no key for the stream door. But I got a key for the big door. So I got to get through the stream door first. My daddy said, uh, wherever you at, 
after 11 o'clock. You stay there. But on Sunday morning, you come in here, I don't care what you put on, you go in the Friendship Baptist Church. And that was for real. All the way till I turned 21 years old. Till I got my own. I'm not going to hold y'all long. Praise be to God. But when I heard these songs today, I want to be where you are. Oh my God, it just touched my heart. Just baby, just sing to tell God I want to be where you are and in your presence. And that's where we need to get back into the presence of God. I know we're going through some hard times and some, some things that we're going through. But God taking us through something that He may perfect us to be better. God is reminding us who we really are. God weaving out stuff. This ain't my sermon, but I just want to share this with you. God weaving out the church to see where the real faithful folks are at. So if the church getting small, it's because those people wasn't really in church for God. And so now God has said, I put you in this place, in the wilderness. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to test you. Then I'm going to prove you. Then I'm going to see where your heart is at. So the people of God don't get dismayed because some of them paid away the window this way, that way. They never was here for the right thing anyway. So all you see now, Pastor, is your faithful members, not to you, but to God. Amen. I want to honor you today. I appreciate uh, my my get the but when I get the gift, ground the Lord, have mercy. I'm going ahead of myself. I want to thank my new Mount Calvary Baptist Church for the invitation. My friend, my my good friend, Brother Joe, Jody, and his wife, um, they've been so grateful to me and been a blessing to me and our family. They uh, we like spiritual uh, families together, so I get a lot of energy from them and they get energy from me. I want to thank my sisters for coming. God bless y'all. All my sisters are here. Won't y'all stand up and let me see my sisters? Amen. One way in her hand, but I got four sisters here. I want to thank God for the two pastors that came from, what's the name of your church again, Virgin? Great Harvey. Great Harvey. Won't y'all stand up? Amen. God bless y'all. I was at that ordination service when they both got ordained as pastor, and it was just an honor to be able to see the women of God taking their place in the kingdom. Amen. 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 There's a message that the Lord has given me today. And what happened was with this message, when Rose had sent me the flyer, I seen the thing, I seen what was on the flyer. So I said, well, let me read that and see what this God is saying. And when I read it, God showed me a lot of different things in that particular scripture. And it was the scripture that the brother read, Psalm 40, 8, uh, 5, Psalm 40, 6 through 8. But when I read this scripture, the Lord took me and found that same scripture in Hebrew chapter 10, verse 5. If you go to Hebrew chapter 10, verse 5 and 10, this scripture is really is talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Psalm 40, verse 6, 7, and 8. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. My ears you have opened. Burn offering. Sin offering you do not require. Then I behold King in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I desire to do your will, O Lord, and your law is in my heart. I like to speak from the top of an obedient service. An obedient service. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you thanking you, O God, for this opportunity to stand at your sacred desk, standing on holy grounds, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for an opportunity, O God, to minister to your people, Father God. But I pray, God, that it be none of me. Let your word go out with clarity and anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray that I decrease and increase, O oh Father God. I pray that I don't even be afraid of their faces, O oh God, for whatever you have me to speak in the name of Jesus. I pray that somebody may run to the altar saying, what must I do to be saved? I pray for those that are backsliders. Let them come back and let them know that you are married to the backsliders. Have your word today, and we thank you for this opportunity to be able to preach an 18-year anniversary of Pastor Harris. So God, keep your blessings in your hands upon him and his wife, his family, his church members, and everybody in the name of Jesus. And God, we be so careful to give you glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. It's in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say, Amen. 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 An obedient service. Notice the scripture opened up and said, Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. We're living in a season that we're making so many sacrifices and so many offerings that God isn't really pleased with it. Mm -hmm. We're going out our way trying to do things, pastors, we're trying to go out the way, making sure everything that the church is going on, all right, making sure, and that's that, that what you're supposed to do as a pastor. But sometimes we're so caught up in sacrifices and offerings that we forget the, our real assignment. We forget the, the true calling what God has called us to be. And so, 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 so the text is showing us here that, that God do not desire our sacrifices or our offerings. Because in the Old Testament, they would make a sacrificial, uh, the sacrifice with an offering of, uh, with a blood offering. You make an animal sacrifice blood offering. I mean, sacrifice, but an offering was when you made an offering with wheat or grain or something that had no blood to it. Mm -hmm. A burnt offering was just a total concentration in yourself and to, to the Lord because of your sin. And, but then there was a sin offering where it was offered and a torment that had to be made for your sin. God is saying all these shit things that you have done in the Old Testament don't even exist today. And what he's saying is today is sometimes we so much, you know, want to be sacrificed and want to make offering. But what God is saying today, I'm not even interested in it. Amen. Amen. God had got to the place where even in this pandemic, people have to pay attention to what's going on. God said, I don't even want your worship no more. Because it's stinking my nostrils. Your praise and your worship became an entertainment. And I'm not getting no glory out of it. Then you're giving your tithes and offerings so that you can have something to say in the, in the meeting. Mm -hmm. That's all you're doing it for. Uh, okay. you're, you're doing a lot of stuff that, that, just, that, you, that you want to please yourself, mm -hmm. but I get no glory out of what you're doing. Okay. God said, I, 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 I'm, I'm tired of this shit. I'm, I'm fooled with this shit. I, 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 not that God sent a, a, a pledge into the world, but he do send a pledge sometimes to get our attention. Mm -hmm. Because the church was off course a little bit. The, club, the church was at a place where uh, uh, God said, I'm not, I'm not, my presence is here, but I don't feel no, no, nobody really honoring me and giving me no glory. Yeah, we sing this song, and, but, but we, we want to be seen because I'm the leader of the song. But I understand when my, my sister was up here saying, I noticed her heart was going to the Lord, but everybody else's heart wasn't going there. Yes. Uh -huh. And sometimes you can leave worship and pray, but you just go there. If nobody else don't go with you, go by yourself. You don't have to pump them up. You don't have to try to make them go where you're going. Because I felt the spirit just sitting here and I had to get up because he said, I want to be in your presence. And if you really want to be in the presence, Sunday is the great day to be in the presence because this place is the presence of God. It's a holy place where we come together and we worship and, and, and we sanctify God and, and we glorify God and we magnify God. Everything else goes out the window. When you cross inside that door, it's all about Him. Enter my gate. With Thanksgiving. In other words, I done went through all trouble all week. All right. But I entered to the gate. Yeah. I made it to the gate. Yeah. Trouble don't last always. Because right. I made it to the gate. Yeah. So once I got to the gate, then I went into the court. Yeah. Everybody can't go into the court. Yeah. Because only the two places you can worship could go inside the court. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. All right. Into his gates with Thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. So when I come into the house of God, 
My expectation is to give God glory. Yes. Amen. Not to give Him no sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Tithe and offering, that's what I do. But I come here to pour my heart out to God. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Come on, come on. For what it say, love the Lord our God with all your heart. Come on. Yes. And all your soul. Yes. And all your mind. Yes. Then when we come into the house of God, this is where we're supposed to be. Right. So God is saying, David is saying, my sacrifices that I'm making, you don't even want them no more. Why? David says something that's very powerful. David said, your sacrifice is not what I want. God said, I want your obedience. God don't see the obedience in leaders. God see a whole lot of stuff that's going on, but he don't see no obedience to him. You making all these sacrifices, you cleaning all these programs, you having all these yeah, revivals and all this shit, but I don't see you being obedient to me because you trying to make the church work instead of giving the church that the church belongs to me. Don't you try to work out what belongs to me. Just be obedient to what I said. Whether the people like it or not, stay obedient unto God. And this is what he's teaching in this here lesson because if you go to Hebrew, Chapter 4, chapter chapter number 10. Hebrew gives you the same as that word. Hebrew talks about Jesus Christ fulfilling his assignment into death. Okay. So when Pastor got called, he ain't had a call just to do 18 years. He got a call till death. Yes, sir. <laughs> It might be longer than 18 years. It might be tomorrow, but he got to stay obedient until death. Yes, Regardless to what everybody will think or say, even we as the people of God got to still be obedient right. until death. Right. You know, we just don't, don't I, I don't get it, Pastor. Pastor's talking about they retiring. Retiring from what? If God called you, God called you to the end. He didn't call you to retire to get a pension. Yes. Where's that in the world? Yes. I'm, I'm a little lost on that then because I'm, I'm seeing pastors so I'm retired. Retired from what? You continue to do the work of the ministry. Did Jesus retire? No. It was to death. He was obedient all right, all right. unto God. Yes. And so here we is in the same text. In Hebrew chapter 10, it says the same thing. But it's here Jesus is talking. He said, therefore, when I come into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you do not desire. But my body you have prepared for me. All right. See, 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 when God called you, he prepared your body for the assignment that he has for you. When God called you, he already predestinated and ordained you for this day. See, Bible said, according to Jeremiah, I have formed you in the belly of your womb before the foundation of the earth. So 18 years was already in, in process before you was even born. You only walked into what God already planned for you. And he still got some more for you. But 18 years was already designed before you got to your mother's womb. Come on now. Come on, I had called you as a prophet, as a man of God, Come on. and I already knew that you were going to have some trouble. Right. I knew you were going to go through some heartache. Oh, yeah. I know you was going to have some pains. Mm -hmm. But I called you for a time as this. Yeah. 18 years ago, you answered a call. Come on. That means David said, my ears went open. Mm -hmm. I heard you call. So, 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 what you hear now? What is God saying now that he ain't say 18 years ago? See, 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 the problem with the church today, God is speaking something new. That's it. He, he, he's saying something different today. He ain't saying what he said 18 years ago. But his word ain't changed. 
but it's just a dis dis dispensation of time. That's all it is. So, so, so God is saying, I'm speaking, but do they have the ears to hear what I'm saying in this season? Because God is saying something in this season, but do we hear what he's saying? And the reason why we ain't hearing him, we ain't going to Bible study. We ain't picking up the word. We ain't praying. So you can't hear from God if you ain't spending no time with God. We in a place where God is speaking something different in the atmosphere. Yes. He done shift. He ain't there no more. Yes, yes. That was last week's praise. Uh -huh. He gave that praise last week. This is a new Sunday. Come on now. This should have a new praise. Come on. Yes. That's right. Come on. If he brought me from that Sunday to this Sunday, your praise should be a little bit more different. Yes. But we go through the routine. Same old praise. Same old worship. When we have to get before God and lay before God like never before. Here it is. God is saying, and Jesus is saying, my body has been prepared, been prepared for me. He said, burn off in the sacrifice of sin. You're not pleased. Then I say, Behold, I come in the laws of the book, which is written of me. Jesus is saying, I'm already in the book. Because the beginning was the word, and the word was God. Pastor, I come to tell you today to encourage you. You was already in the word. You was part of the scroll. How do I know? Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15 said this. After the children of Israel being disobedient, rebelling, falling into God, worshiping idols, Jeremiah said, I will give you pastors. Oh my God, it's in the Word. Yep. So he already written of you in his Word. Because he said, I give you pastors according to what? My heart. So the problem is, do you have the heart of God? Yeah. In order to carry out God's word, you got to have God's heart. So he said, I'm going to give you pastors after my own heart. So in order for you to be the man of God, you got to demonstrate what God look like. You got to talk what God talk. You got to act like God acts. You got to love like God loves. You got to forgive like God forgives. So when he said, I'll give you pastors after my own heart, which will feed you with my knowledge Come on now. and my understanding. Come on. Yes, Lord. So when God called you, He didn't call you for you. He called you to feed the flock. I'm going to give you some people. But I want you to feed them knowledge and understanding. Samuel, what is it that you want? Sammy said, Lord, all I want you to do is to establish every promise that you made into my father. Amen. He said, but give me wisdom that I may lead your people. Amen. You need the wisdom of God and the mind of God to lead God's people. Because God's people ain't no different than the people in the Old Testament. Amen. They suddenly bowing, backsliding, worship of torture, people. Yes. All right, all right. And it becomes hard for the man of God to bring them up. Because the people are still rebelling and being disobedient just like they did in the Old Testament. How do I know? The Bible said ain't nothing new underneath the sun. So don't get in trouble, Pastor. You keep being obedient because he called you. From the day that he you entered to your mother's womb, you was already predestinated for this day. Amen. Because he said, I'm going to give you Reverend Harris after my own heart. All right. That will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 20, verse 28 said, Take heed unto thyself and to all the flock which the Holy Ghost 
have made you oversee to the church of God. Amen. Take heed to yourself Amen. and the flock, knowing it was the Holy Ghost that made you the overseer of the church. Yes, yes. You didn't make over been overseer of the church on your own. The Holy Ghost made you overseer of the church because why? It was purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. not your blood. Come on, Come on now. And everybody, leaders, think the church belong to them. I'm the CEO. Wait a minute. CEO of what? Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church. It's Christ's church. How you become the executive leader of the church when God told you to pastor the church, not to be no CEO? We ain't a world church. We are a spiritual church. Just come to the curse you a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> come on. Because we as leaders have to be mindful that we're in a position that God gave us. People might have voted for you, but they got that vote from God. They got that vote. God ordained it that you be here. It said here in Ephesians chapter 4, he said, I gave some apostles. I gave some prophets, I gave some evangelists, I gave some pastors and teachers. Notice he said, I gave some. <laughs> Everybody wanted to be an apostle, but there ain't no some. Come on, Tom. Come on, Tom. Everybody want to be a prophet, but they ain't in the sun. Everybody want to be a pastor, but they ain't in the sun. Everybody want to be an evangelist, but they ain't in the sun. Right, right. And everybody want to teach you something, and right. ain't in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Being a prophet, man of God, being an apostle, is the one that established and take care of the business of the church. Amen. That was Paul assignment. Yeah. So you as an apostle, should govern the church. Keep stuff in order. Uh -huh. He also called you to be a prophet. Yeah, yeah. He ain't tell you, give me a hundred dollars and you be a millionaire next week. That ain't a prophecy. That's a lie. But he did tell you to tell him this. Repent. Uh -huh. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. All have sin. Yeah. Came short of the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. He told you to tell him this. The devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. But Jesus came that you may have life yeah. and more abundantly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the prophecy. That's it. Yeah. It's to preach the word. To tell him the truth. Yeah. Don't sugarcoat it. Hallelujah. Yeah. He told you. To be an evangelist. You know, I got to help somebody with this. There's no way that you can come to church, sit underneath preaching and teaching without doing the work of the evangelist. This assignment is to everybody. Paul told Pete, told Timothy, before you do the work of the ministry, do the work of the evangelist. Yeah. What is I'm saying? Pastor, there's some time you might just be in line at Walmart, but you got spiritual discernment. Uh -huh. And you look, you see them acting up. Hey, brother, come here, man. Let me talk to you. <laughs> Opportunity uh -huh. that God will provide you to say something to somebody to give them some hope. Yeah. I had them seen pastors in the mall. Hey, Pastor, what's your name? How you doing? Yeah. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Walk right past you. Uh -huh. Because they're too high headed. Uh -huh. To come down like Jesus come down. Uh -huh. And be with the people. They're so high headed. And they tie so uh -huh. and they collar so tight. Uh -huh. They ain't got no word. Come on, Carl. You know why? Because they live in sin. Can't tell me nothing if you ain't doing right. Yeah. People watching. They see how you act. 
People feel the vibe. Walked up to a man of God. Stand up for a minute, man. I, mean, I hate to use people. <laughs> use it. That's all right. Use it. Use it. Oh, yeah. oh he won. Yeah, you. Use it. Use it. Use it. Go ahead, man. I was at the store. Uh-huh. Shot right. Uh-huh. I see the pastor come in. Go ahead, man. I walked up to him. Hey, pastor. I didn't tell his name. Hey, pastor. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> That's just what he did. <laughs> My sister was standing there and said, Is he a pastor? <laughs> and the other lady said, He can't be a pastor. Uh, yeah. Ignore me. Walked away. Uh -huh. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but what my point is, we as leaders can't be to a place. I don't care what they look like. What they smell like, yeah. what they've been drinking, mm. or what they've been doing. Right. We still got the events lost. Yes, it's a shame. I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to anyway. go there anyway. Go there. Three churches in this block. Yes. They should be going to at least one of these churches yes. if we go out there and do the work of the ministry. Amen. 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 Pick a day. Right. Today, we're walking up and down this street. Mm -hmm. We're going to minister to some of them. Some of them are going to hear a word. Mm -hmm. The only time they pick up their Bible, the only time they hear a word is when they see you. Yeah. And that's the time that we have to do evangelism. Mm -hmm. He said, I gave some pastors. People took that word out of context. The word pastor means compassion. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. I have a love for God's people. I ain't just, just walking all over God's people. Uh -huh. I have compassion. Jesus said, I had compassion for the people because they have no shepherd. And we got shepherds that with no compassion right. for the people. Yeah. That's right. So right. You want to remind you of your call. Yeah. He said what? And teachers. You got to be able to teach. Yes. At the ability that God gave you. That's it. You ain't got no PhD. No, I'm trying to preach PhD. <laughs> you got a crop lane education. Teach it. Because yes. it's more simple and easier yep. to teach simple than to try to give them big words. Right. You can't even pronounce right. no spell. Right. Come on, you right. mm. so Teach them. The word of God. Yes. Cross the damn scripture. Let them ask you questions. And don't tell nobody to read that you know can't read because you're embarrassing them. That's compassion. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to put nobody in position. And no, no. I, I got something else for you to do. I know you can't read that well. That's okay. I'm not going to put you out there. I know you can't pay. I'm not. That, that compassion. Yeah. Uh -huh. Instead of putting them out there embarrassing them. Yeah. Right. And then talk about them behind the closed door. Don't you know behind the closed door, more packs to talk junk than the people in the pew? Come on. Right. Come on. I done been in them office with them old crazy pastors talking about another pastor, talking about another member. And you talking about you the man of God. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I done sat back there with him. And I shake my head. And then you get out there. Yep. Yep. After you done talked about it. Oh, God be the God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Picture the man anniversary that you just talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. yeah. Gotta be careful. Because we got some, love, some jealous pastors. Some envious pastors. They don't like your gift. They don't like the way you flow. Because you don't do what they're doing at where they're at. Yeah, yes. right? So I give you teachers. Bible said, for what? For the profession of the saints. Uh -huh. yeah. To equip the saints. Yeah. To build the saints up. Yes. For what? The work of the ministry. Yes. That's all we do in teaching. To build the saints up. Yeah. To perfect the saints. That they can be strong to do the work of the ministry. Yeah. Do you think the 12 went out there knowing everything? No. Jesus had to teach them. Right. He had to equip them. He said, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send you a comfort to help you to carry out the rest of the assignment. So the Holy Ghost is here to help you carry out the rest of the assignment. We pray to the Father 
in the name of Jesus, by Holy Ghost, I need your help. So, 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 so here it is. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. It had nothing to do with the sacrifice. It had nothing to do with your offering. It's about your obedience unto God. Yes, yes. And have your ears open to hear what God is saying. Mm -hmm. Jesus, you made it simple. Jesus, where you been at? We've been looking for you. <laughs> Don't you know I got to be about my father's business? And that's your assignment. You got to continue to be about our father's business. Yes, yes. Even the saints of God. The people of God. Don't think he got to be about his father's business. He your daddy too. Right. <laughs> you got to be about your father's business. Right, right. What is God is saying to you as a people to help him carry out what God told him to do? Right. You got to be about your father's business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on now. These musicians, that's what they do. <laughs> but it's about my father's business, ain't it? You playing for the glory of God. He ain't playing for God. You gonna pay him? I'm playing because I want to glorify God that he hear the sound and that he'll come down and be part of the worship. It ain't about the money. It ain't about the sacrifice. But this is what I'm gonna tell the people. Let the altar that rules well. Don't say y'all pastor we rule well, man. Right? Right. Yeah. The pastor do a good job, right? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, I got to hear that, boy. Yeah. 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 Your pastor do a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Let the elders that rules well be counted double honor. Yeah. All right. All right. Come All right. on, come on. All right. All right. I ain't say give him $10. $20, double the honor. That's right. But you don't have to honor him with money. Go up to him and say, Pastor, I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. I learned something from you. Encourage the man of God. Let him know how much you appreciate what he's doing for the glory of God. Because it's changing my life. It's changing my family. It's changing my thoughts. It's helping me with my finance. It's helping me with my marriage. It's helping me through my sickness. It's helping me here or there. But you got to honor the man of God. He said, he said, he said, especially those that labor in the word All and right. the doctrine. Come on. Yeah. He preaching any other doctrine. Uh -huh. He's out of order. Yeah, that's right. And you would know it <laughs> if you pull of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Because your spirit would not agree with it. There you go. If it's out of the will of God. Oh, yeah. Especially. If it's the word and the doctrine, if he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, he can't go wrong. And whether they hear it or don't hear it, whether they like it or don't like it, you preach in season, out of season. What do that mean? I'm preaching in season when things go right, but I'm preaching out of season when things ain't going right. Come on, come on. When my wife acting up, I'm still going to preach. Come on. When the church act up, I'm still gonna preach. Right, right. The light bill, the light got cut off, I'm still gonna preach. Amen. In season and out of season. Preach the word and continue to get the word. But he also tell the people, don't murder the ox. Don't kill him. Give him a break. He telling you, he giving you the corn, he giving you the word. Some folks are so greedy. <laughs> they want the word. You try to give them steak and potatoes. But they want to go to the buffet. Uh -huh. Knowing they cannot digest all that word. So they try to pull them on asking some crazy, crazy, crazy questions. That's when they're mugging you. They pulling you to try to get you to say something that ain't lined up with the word of God. You got to watch some of these folks who the devil you to ask you questions in Bible study. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Got to be careful. Amen. Mm -hmm. okay. But this is what the scripture said. Right. The labor is honor 
a Wookie boy. He's working hard. He deserves a reward. Then he goes down and says, Pastors are shepherds of the church. They fulfill the old and the new testaments as an elder and a bishop as the overseer. You may not be a bishop, title wise, but in the spirit, you're a bishop because you oversee the things of the church. Pastor must have wisdom and the responsibility and the care of the church. The shepherd must have the care for the chief. He must be able to teach and be able to teach the word in season and out of season. He must recognize that he's just a service, not just to his congregation, but he'll minister to everybody, whoever comes in their flock. He's got to know how to manage the property and the things of God. There's a lot that a pastor has to do as a man of God. We're living in a season now, pastors are walking away from the church, now you're going south. Pastors are committing suicide because they can't handle the pressure and because they lose the member. Look, I'm one, we down about four or five members. I ain't gonna tell no lie, but I ain't got no problem with it because I got to do better with the four and five when I had 15, 20, 25. But the 15, 25, 25 wasn't doing nothing no way. But I found out the faithful ones that was in the church, we doing more now than we ever done before. God take a little and do a lot with. Sometimes when you got a lot, you doing a little. But you take a little and do a lot with. And God will use whoever there is because they understand there's a call for you. And this is my last thing. I just want to share this with you. According to 1 Peter 5, 2 and 4, he said, Feed my God, the flock of God, which he had made you overseer of. Keep them in the place with us, not being contrary, not being not willing, but not being of a filthy loofer, but with a ready mind, have a ready mind to serve God. He said, neither be the Lord in heaven, but be an example to the flock. Be an example, like Jesus was an example for us. He said, be an example to the fly. Amen. He said, when the great shepherd appears, Come on. when Jesus appears, yes. and that's all you had done, mm -hmm. and that's all the heartbreaks, Come on. and that's all the disappointments, yes. and that's all the crying and the tears, he said, when the great shepherd shows up, he said, if you don't faint and give up, there's a reward yes. waiting on you. He said you can't give up. Yes, you can't throw in the towel regardless of what people think or say. And I come to tell the people of God this ain't the time to quit. Matter of fact, it's the time to get more busy. Matter of fact, it's the time to continue being the word. This is the time that you put your pastor to do more work and to help him build the kingdom of God. He said, because at the end of the day, he said, you're going to receive a crown and it's going to be a crown of glory. And see, so you got to keep on working until you get your crown. There's a crown waiting for you, my brother. There's a crown that the Lord is going to give you. There's a crown that God going to put on your head. There's a crown. It's called the crown of glory because of all of what you've done. The crown of glory is the glory of God. It will be upon your head. It will be upon your mind. It will be upon your heart. You will see the crown of glory. Because when the great shepherd comes, you're going to put a crown on your head. It's called the crown of glory. But God said, I got glory. It's all what you did. I heard your cry. I felt your pain. Yes, sir. But you hung in there, Pastor. Come on. You got a reward coming. Yes, sir. It might not be in this time. And every saint in here, if you can keep doing what God tells you, then the reward waiting on you too also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay obedient to God's word. I came today to encourage the man of God. Yeah. Pastors falling by the wayside. Yeah. Well, that's right. You got to stay in there. Amen. And it will be his help. God gonna help you. God gonna help you. 
Ele é bem ele está livre no oficina. Stop trying to figure it out. And just hear from God. Jesus said, my ears were open to God. And God gave me a body. Jesus had to fulfill that assignment that me and you can have life. He could have got down off that cross. He was in the garden. He said, Father, if it's that possible, remove this cup from me. But he said, not my will, but let thy will be done. Pastor, I've been in that boat before. I don't want to quit. I don't want to throw in the towel, Pastor. Sometimes I'm like, this ain't for me. And it becomes lonely sometimes. Sometimes you can't share that with your wife. You can't share that feeling with other people. And God said, no, you don't. I called you for a time as this. Because I got greater things for you. But I got to purge you a little bit more. Because there's something in you. I got to get out of you. In order for me to take you to the next level. Don't be dismayed. God is not finished with you. 18 years of pastor, count it all joy. Amen. 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 Somebody in here. And this was those who've been going to church for a long time too also. I'm not opening up the doors to the church. Because the doors to the church were opened up 2,000 years ago. That's right. Jesus said, make disciples. But anybody want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, and God is calling you for discipleship, that means God is calling you now. It's time for you to come and do some work for His glory. Some people been in the church and been on the road for 50 years, but they never gave their heart to Christ. Come on, come on now. And they've been in here raising the hill, in the meetings, making decisions but their heart is not there with God. Yes, sir. God is looking for those who have a willing heart. That's why he said, I give you pastors after my own heart. And the only way that you're gonna know that your man of God has the heart of God is when you know is your heart with God. Amen. Amen. Anybody who wants to give their life to Christ, and you truly have not given your life to Christ, This is an opportunity. I just come today to encourage the man of God. I know we want to preach to everybody, but you got to be reminded of his assignment. Somebody need to tell him sometimes. Somebody need to tell me sometimes. God is calling for your obedience, not your sacrifice. No matter here, open up your church all day long. Put all the money in there to try to keep it going. And miss God. Amen. Because you're not hearing from Him to be obedient. I did something in my church and I had to repent. The church was falling apart, so sometimes when the church is going low, sometimes you, you, you think you're hearing from God, but you're not hearing from God. All right, all right. So I told the church to do. I said, I know y'all bring your tithes and offering in. So I did. I said, I want everybody to bring at least 25 hours every week and it'll meet the bills. After I did the math, it'll meet all of my bills. We have a little excess. This is what I chose the church to do. They agree with it. That night, God said, Who told you to do that? I was trouble a whole week because I tried to do what God intended to happen. God said, wait a minute, you, you, you go back and you correct that. They got a responsibility to pay their tithes. You don't make it work for them. They have a responsibility. They know what the word of God said. And they're supposed to help the church. And you ain't supposed to make no way for them. God dealt with me. And I had to go back and tell the church I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I apologize. You 
got a responsibility that God has gave every individual here to do to keep the body of Christ going. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that I may have meat in my house. Prove me, said the Lord of heaven. I will open you up a window and pull you out of blessing that there be no room for me feed it. It's not our responsibility. We have to hold the people accountable. And if they don't be careful, yeah. God will deal with them. You don't have to look in the book. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They know what they know what they're doing. Yeah. Keep bringing the dollar. Mm. Keep getting the dollar blessed. Yeah. Whatever you show, that's what you're gonna read. I'm not here talking about y'all ain't paying no time. Either. I'm telling you what, how God dealt with me as a man of God. Yeah. Yeah. Now, sometimes we compromise to, 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 to try to make things work yeah. when the word of God said it could work if you follow my word. Mm. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? That's all I got to take. Because I'm going to, Amen. Amen. I don't know this restaurant we're going to, but they better have some good food for my money. <laughs> <laughs> All I eat today, and I ain't finished eating that banana. But <laughs> well, I'm gonna congratulate you. You know this man of God. I'm gonna share this with you. I really don't know him from a can of paper. But I came and preached at his church, and he opened the door to allow me to come. And I don't think he really knew me. I didn't know him, but he trusted Jody and uh, Rose. After that, I said, I love this man's spirit. I ain't buy him over to my church. I think maybe twice. Maybe twice. Because you know why? You don't find too many humble pastors. You don't find too many pastors that's, that love you for who you are. You, you, you know, and, and not just that. He, he, he ain't had to go to no big church. He said, I ain't getting, we ain't getting invited to no church because we got enough money. Mm -hmm. We ain't bringing enough money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But we can bring the anointing. Right. Yeah. We can bring some yokes. Yeah. We can make people repent. Yeah. We can lay hands on the sick and they can be covered. Yeah. This is what we got is full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We may not have no holy money, yeah. but we got some Holy Ghost. Yeah. And we have lay hands on the sick yeah. and the sick shall be covered. Yeah. And maybe some of your members We go there with a different spirit. I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry, I had to look at my wife. Look at her face. And she gave him, you know, funny look. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> what church is about. This is what fellowship is about. About a smile and laughing. Enjoying one another. That's what church folks do. I got to come in the door broken down. Broken down. But somebody got that smile that made me forget about my situation. And that's what we need. The love of God is in the house of God. He said, do good to all but especially those that's in the household. Woman of God, thank you for that song. I really did. That song did touch my heart. I want to be where you are. It really touched my heart. And see, this, this, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great to go somewhere with this. An old woman, I'm not that old, not that old. <laughs> <laughs> A senior citizen, singing an update music. She didn't sing old school. She sang something that modified and sang it with the anointing and the power of God. That let me know you got good ministers and good preachers up in here. And that was the Spirit of God. Keep doing what God tells you to do.
Keep leading the choir. They might say, oh, she act no, just keep acting the fool. <laughs> acting the fool. Because Jesus acted the fool. And they hung him on the cross because he acted the fool. There's a cross for you, and there's a cross for me. And we act the fool. God bless you. Give the musicians a hand. And all the ministers, deacons, and everyone, everyone that served this morning, we really do appreciate you. We're not going to stay too much longer. We want to get ready to prepare and go uh, where we need to go. But uh, uh, my wife and I, we're just very, 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 very appreciative of everyone um, who would even have a thought uh, of joining us and, and helping us to celebrate. We really do appreciate it. I don't know about you, but I didn't know uh, when I came here how long I was going to be here or, uh, uh, or anything like that. Amen? And uh, I, eight, the last 18 years have been the honor of my life. The honor of my life. I've had some ups and we've had some downs together. We've had some ups together, amen. But we're yep. still here. Yes. You know, and I could talk about the struggles of, of the past two years and all of that kind of thing, but you know what? I didn't come here for that today. I came here to talk about the next the next two years. Amen. amen. We can keep moving forward. I came here to talk about moving forward together. Amen. amen. And I don't know about you, but I, I'm ready to. Uh, 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 put some stuff behind me. I'm ready to put some some difficulties behind me. I'm ready to put some things, some grudges behind me. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm ready to move forward with a clean slate. Amen? Amen. I, I, I really love all of you. Uh, and I could call some names out, but I won't do that because I might forget somebody. Amen? <laughs> I'm sure that I would. But, but, just God bless all of you, and I, hopefully I'll see you, and we can talk a little bit, or we can we can fellowship a little bit later on this afternoon. If not, I hope I see you again real soon in God's house. God bless all of you. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let's give God praise. Yeah, God is God is about to take you guys to another phase and another direction, to another higher height. Just be prepared for whatever God helps y'all to do, take you to another level. In a different time, we're in a different time and disposition of time. Uh, when we look at the world, it's not they focus on the world, but they focus on the things of God. Amen. 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 Whatever we keep our eyes to the hill for which comes our help. And God will reveal to us in the spirit is what he wants done. Not what the world. Let the world do what the world do. We do what God tells us to do. Amen. 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 Am
Amen. We're going to be persecuted for righteousness' sake. But that's the assignment. But God, like I said, you bring us out of trouble. Amen. 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 I want to thank uh, the church for allowing me and my wife and family to come and be with y'all. It's just an awesome time. You know what I'm saying? I count it all joy. Congratulations again, 18 years. Pastor, it's the anniversary. I pray that the Lord will bless you with many more. And like I said, put everything behind me, Pastor. Just be obedient to what God tells you to do. That's all you have to do. And whatever the Lord told you, and, and we got to get to that place. And I'm glad you said something. We got to get to that place, uh, put stuff away, and forget and forgive, and move on. Amen. 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 Stuff that we pastors go to. We got to remember, he's human just like we are. Yeah. He hurt. You cut him, he gonna bleed. Right. You see what I'm saying? He go through to trial and tribulation. And it's hard when you have to take care of your family, you got to monitor your job, and you got to monitor the church. It's a lot of weight on him. So we have to be able to help him carry that burden. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's all stand to be dismissed. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your encouragement the word today. To remind all of us to continue to be obedient to your word. To have an open ears to hear what you said. And God, not to do things just to be doing them, but to do them for your glory. We pray now, Father God, that you will continue to bless this church in a mighty way and every member. Continue to keep your, your hands on the pastor, Father God. Keep his mind, keep his heart, keep his soul, Father God. Him, his wife, his family, oh God. With everything he touched, oh God, that he will be blessed. Give him a new outlook, give him a new dream, new vision, oh God. And that the church and he shared with the church and the church carried out the vision which you have for him in this time and season. So God, we thank you for this, this word. I thank you, oh God, for being a blessing to me, oh God. I'm just so joyful, oh God, for all the things that you have done in my family and my life, oh God. I just pray for every individual, those that are sick and afflicted. God, we want to think about them. We want to uh, pray for those that still run in the streets all night long, oh God. We pray that you will cover them, oh God. We pray for our brothers and sisters that are still hospitalized in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we want to pray for those that are still prison bound. They may be locked up, but they're not locked out from you, oh God. We just want to see your glory again, oh God. Let your glory fall in this year, please. Thank you for your glory falling. Thank you for the anointing that fell today. Thank you for the spirit that fell in here today. And God, we just appreciate you of who you are. Now, God, if we leave this place, but God, we never leave your presence, oh God. Go with us throughout the rest of the day. Hold our steps, oh God. Uh, we let them have a blessing and a wonderful day that they can enjoy it to the rest of the day. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but we thank you for today. It's in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in Jesus' name. Let somebody say amen. 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 One more for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Amen.